I wanted the book to feel kind of quick and spontaneous, so I used uh, just a Canon power shot. You know, because I, 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 I wanted to take pictures of crowds without thinking about it too much. Like my other camera is the 5D Mark II, and I have quite a long lens on it, and that's what most of these pictures were taken with. The, as you know, the 5D Mark II with a long lens is not the most like spontaneous portable camera, as opposed to like quick little power shot, take a picture, you're done. You know, you don't have to think of exposure, you don't have to think of focus. Um, whereas with the 5D Mark II, I love it, but it's more of a it's a more of a photographer's camera, you know. And I shoot it manually, so I don't I don't trust it to tell me what the exposure should be. And I don't trust it to tell me what the focus should be. Well, sometimes I will do autofocus, but autofocus, not to ramble on too much, but autofocus with crowds is really hard because there's lights flashing, so it doesn't know what to focus on. Some crowds are more photogenic than others. So sometimes before I play a concert, I'll look at an audience and I'll just think to myself, you know what? I'm just not going to take pictures. Like, and it says nothing about the attractiveness of the crowd. Sometimes it's the lights, sometimes it's the number of people in the audience. And then again, sometimes I'm surprised. Like sometimes I'll take a photograph of a crowd thinking, oh, that was nothing, and then go back and look at it and realize there's something really special there. So again, the beauty of digital photography, I just try, I try and document almost every show, but sometimes I give myself the night off, and I'm like, okay, tonight I'm not gonna bring my camera on stage. If you stand on stage and you point a camera at a crowd, they throw their hands in the air. Sometimes in the middle of a concert, I'll stop the concert and start taking pictures of people, and they throw their hands in the air. Or oftentimes during the very last song, which is you know, sort of the big ecstatic encore, that's a really good time to take pictures of people because they're all having this like, collective ecstatic experience. They're really, they're only three pictures in the book. They're pictures of crowds, they're pictures of empty spaces, and then etc. <laughs> My experience of being on tour is one minute you're on stage in front of 40,000 people, and the next minute you're by yourself in an empty dressing room. And it's not a bad way to live, but it's a really strange way to live. And so I wanted the book to capture that strangeness. Photographers go on tour to document the glamorous side. You know, they document Bruce Springsteen playing at Madison Square Garden, covered in sweat, you know, pouring his heart out. Or they document Led Zeppelin on a plane having sex with groupies, or Eddie Vedder throwing himself into a crowd. No one documents the true, strange, disconcerting, sterile quality of being on tour, which is that just sitting by yourself in an empty room, there's a knock on the door, you leave the door, 30 seconds later you're on stage in front of 20,000 people. The concert's over, you're back in your little room by yourself. So it's, it's, it's a really, so as far as reportage go, that's, that's sort of like the reportage aspect of the book. I have uh, like a band I travel with and crew that I travel right. with, but they are people I work with. So we don't really hang out that much. They're, they're very nice, they're all very nice right. people. I guess when I was in high school and college, Music and photography were things that I did, and I would try and share them with people, but no one was all that interested, you know? So I'd maybe have like a long-suffering girlfriend, and I'd show her pictures, and she'd humor me and be like, oh, that's nice, or play music, and she'd be like, oh, that's nice. So um, I never expected anyone to pay attention to the music that I make or the photography that I do. And uh, it came as a great surprise that as I got older, people were actually willing to listen to the music I made and pay atten now pay attention to the photographs and I'm because I really thought that my whole life would be spent making music making art in obscurity and having no one pay attention to it and that was okay I didn't because most of my friends were artists or musicians that's the case it's like they work long and hard on what they do and rarely do they find an audience for it so I'm still sort of baffled by the fact that I have an audience for what I do at times Okay, here's the bad part. Um, I had a few thousand images, and this is, and I didn't understand how to save them. So I saved the thumbnails. Is that, I thought I was saving thousands of pictures, and so I copied everything over to a hard drive, and then went back and cleared off the other hard drive, went back to this hard drive, and there was nothing there. It was all these. 
I forget what they're... 20K files? Exactly. Yes. And so it, it's the nature of existence. I can't get to it. Like, but that was, I mean, maybe, maybe they weren't even very good. Who knows? But luckily, I, what I do have is a lot of the prints that I made when I was a teenager and in, into my early 20s, you know, when I used to shoot film and print. So I do have some of those. No one ever really taught me how to preserve prints. So they have yellowed quite a bit, like, and I, I forget what it was. Like, I, I remember like a little stick that you put on them that would sort of like, in well, theory, if make I mean, them. If, if they're not fixed fully, yeah, that will, they'll eventually start to go. So I have quite a lot of sepia, unintentional <laughs> sepia prints. No. No, I never saved negatives. I was, I, yeah, I was, I know, I, but I, because I never thought, I never saved master tapes, I never saved anything. It's one of my regrets is that in hindsight, I guess, because when you're, when you're 16 years old and you're recording music and you're taking pictures, you just think like, oh, no one's ever going to want to pay attention to this, so why save anything? So I, I saved some of the prints, but I don't think I saved too many negatives. Wowie. Yeah, that's Time okay. This is one of the reasons why I was hesitant to show photographs to people is because in the age of digital photography, I mean, everybody's a photographer. You know, everybody with an iPhone and Hipstamatic can take pretty good pictures. And so I didn't want to just be another dilettante musician who calls himself a photographer. So I was very hesitant to show the work to anybody. But I have a bunch of friends in New York who are artists, and they, I showed them the work. And they were really encouraging. And do uh, you know Terry Richardson, the photographer Terry Richardson? So Terry sort of said to me, he's like, look, you grew up shooting film. You've been a photographer for 35 years. You're allowed to call yourself a photographer. He's like, he's like, you know what you're doing. If you had just gotten a digital camera two years ago, maybe then you'd be a dilettante. The first class I took, like more serious photo class I took, um, the teacher was like, well, you know, always use your tongs <laughs> or wear gloves. No, no one does that. Like, you know, like you do that for a day and all of a sudden you're grab, your hands are in the chemicals. And yeah, I still remember all my, I'd forgotten about those, all my dodging, my dodging and burning tools. Yeah. They were so cool. Like having this conversation sort of taken me back to like how proud I was when I started to develop skills as a printer. You know, like I, mean, I had like this tiny little wire with like a quarter taped like in masking tape and you kind of that you know oh yeah i just i had completely forgotten about that side of it my advice for photographers hmm i guess it's keep shooting and i know that sounds so cliched but it's the idea of like just shoot everything you know because you think of someone like ouija for example like i don't think at first ouija knew that he was capturing such amazing stuff. He was just a, he was a cop photographer. And over time he started realizing like, oh wow, because I've shot everything, I have these archives and they're amazing. Um, I think I saw something, Bob Gruen, you know, the photographer, and same thing, like he just kept shooting. And as long as you're shooting, if you're not shooting, there's no way you're gonna capture anything good. And as long as you're shooting, there's no guarantee you'll capture anything good, but it certainly increases the chances. I think there's also that like, constantly educate yourself like look at what other people are doing try and figure out how they're doing what they're doing um, I think that's really important like as far as like creative people keeping their edge to constantly be exposed to other people's work Sally Mann is probably one of my favorite photographers of all time um, and when I was growing up uh, I really, I mean, a lot of the classic, like Edward Steichen, um, especially, I mean, this is, okay, the, I remember the first serious photo class I took, the first question our teacher asked us, first day of class, they said, okay, so what's the difference between photography now and photography 120 years ago? And no one got the answer right. The answer, it was better then. Meaning, like, the image, like, there's actually more information. You know, like, because this is, we were all shooting 35, and she was like, the difference is, back then, they shot on big plates, they, you know, like, it, technically, it was better then.
She's like, it's one of the only art forms where the technical quality of it has gone downhill. Maybe not so much now, but um, so Edward Steichen, like his early, like the plate photography and like up in, his work up until about 1915. And after that, I really liked it. And it's an obvious answer, but I think as, as far as a big inspiration was Andre Cortez, just because he did so much with the 35 millimeter camera, you know? And like when I was printing, you know, I mean, one of the goals in printing is to have like rich blacks and bright whites in the same image. And it was almost impossible. You know, like you have a lot of grays. And uh, I was just, I'd look at some of his prints and just be like, how did he do that? You know, these like voluptuous blacks and like these pristine whites all at the, in the same print. And, uh, and the sort of like the accidental way that he framed things, you know, I mean, it's just clearly, just, yeah. And, and he's such a well-known photographer, so I feel a little bit obvious in choosing him. Um, but, but still, like, when I was 16 years old, that's who I was obsessed with as a photographer. We walk off stage and I go read a book. It didn't used to be that way. It used to be that I would walk off stage and desperately want to go out and get drunk and find the next crazy party. But unfortunately, as I got older, the consequences of being a fall-down drunk uh, caught up with me.